Hello and welcome to the Clever Fox YouTube channel. My name is Elise and today we are going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite planning topics and that is budgeting. Sometimes budgeting can be scary, but having the right budget planner definitely makes it less scary and helps you be intentional with your finances. I have the brand new Clever Fox budget planner large here and I'm going to give you a tour of this planner and we are going to set up my budget for May, talking about where my money is going to go and different savings goals that I have for May. So make sure that you watch the whole video so you don't miss any of the budgeting tips and tricks that I am sharing today and that you are subscribed to our channel with that notification bell turned on so that you get notified each time we post a new video. Let's dive right into this planner. I first want to start with a tour because this is a new product. So this is eight 0.3 by 11 inches. This is a one year undated budget planner. And of course you have your warranty card inside and also a little bit of a quick start guide with some information and examples about how you can use this planner. Then of course you have the name page and then we have space for 10 financial goals and also a mind map to help you achieve those goals. Then we have strategy, new skills I need to learn to achieve my financial goals goals, my money affirmations for wealth and prosperity, my tactics, actions I will I will take to earn more money, and actions I will take to cut my expenses. And then you have important dates. This is one of the most crucial elements of a budget planner, in my opinion, because there are important dates that we need to remember that are going to cost money. Maybe it's a Mother's Day, as I'm thinking about May, or it's a renewal for my Amazon Prime membership, which is in December, um, my brother's birthday just different things that cost us money that are really important to remember. Even like I pay quarterly taxes, having that noted is really important. And then you have your month. So this is a nice large two page monthly where you have the monthly goals, a checklist, bills and expenses, income and savings, and then the whole month here and notes to include as well. After the month, you have a monthly budget. So we're going to do that budget today and also a monthly budget review in addition to expense tracking pages. So you get three really big expense tracking pages and then you have room for notes and ideas. Then it's going to go to the next month. So at the end of the 12 months, there are also going to be additional pages here that are going to help you map out your financial goals. So we have savings tracker, saving for amount needed and due date, the date, the deposit and the balance. So you have four, eight of those. Now we have debt trackers, the debt name, starting balance, minimum payment, date, amount paid and balance. You have four, eight, 12 of these. Now we have a holiday budget. Holidays are the things that happen every year that sometimes we forget about when it comes to saving and preparing. So there is space to categorize your budget, map out gifts and your spending, and then also list out your holiday spending with a tracker. And now we have a bill tracker. So because this is an undated planner, you can start it at any time and not feel like you're wasting any of the pages that would go unused if it were dated and you were starting mid-year. So the idea here is that you'll write down your bills, you'll write down the month, and if a bill is going to be the same, you can check it off once it's been paid or if it varies every month, like maybe an electric bill, a water bill, a credit card bill, you'll be able to put those amounts here. So as an example, let's say we are going to write May and I can write my mortgage and that amount is 3361.95. And that's going to stay the same each month, but when I pay it, what I could do is take a highlighter and just highlight that it's been paid. But if I put my electric bill, I won't know that amount until it comes and then I can highlight once it's been paid. So this can be really helpful for the variable bills like a credit card bill, an electric bill, water, heat, gas, all of that. Because as you're looking to budget for a future month, it'll be really helpful to see what you spent either in the previous month or in the previous season. Because what I'm going to spend on my electric is going to be different in July than it will be in December. So having this overview is definitely helpful. And then we have a summary of the year. So the month, your income, expenses, difference in savings, and then a monthly expense summary. And then you have a check register as well. So two full pages of a check register 
and account information with your name, account, website, username, password, hint, and notes. And then a couple of extra pages here for you to jot, at, jot down any ideas that you have. And then you also have a pocket here with some sticker sheets to help get you started because stickers make everything more fun. Now this does come undated, but I've already gone ahead and set up the dates for May just so that they're already in there. And I'm first going to take these payday stickers and we're going to put them right down here on the corner so that I can see really easily when my paydays are. I feel like putting down paydays and bills are always the first step with budgeting. Now, one thing that I need to note here is because Monday is a holiday, I won't get paid that day, but I will get paid the Friday before with my direct deposit. And that happens each time. The first time that happened, it was very confusing because I had more money in my bank account than I was supposed to have on a Friday and could not figure out why and thought that I made some catastrophic financial error. So now we have the paydays down and we're going to write bills and expenses. So first up, I'm going to list my mortgage. The due date is the first, the amount is 3361. 95. Then we have my HOA. I live in a townhouse, so I have a monthly bill for that. And we have my car that is due on the 28th, 338. I have New Jersey's electric gas and heat that is on the 17th. I don't know the amount yet. Then we have my cell phone bill that is due on the 18th. That is 146. And then I have my home internet that is due on the 19th. And that is 87. 50. I also have, I'm gonna shorten some credit cards here and one more. These are due on the 3rd, the 16th, and the 29th. And then I also have my Peloton membership, which is due on the 3rd. That is $44. And I have Netflix, and that is due on the 30th, and that is $15. So now that I have those bills in, I can take these bill stickers and put them on those dates. So we have the 1st, the 28th, the 17th, 18th, and 19th. That's always an expensive few days. 19th, we have the 3rd, the 16th. I know I didn't write these in order. The 29th, and I just need a couple of extra bill stickers because we ran out, but I do have some others from previous sticker sets here. So we got the 29th, we, need, we have the 3rd, and the 30th, just needed one more. And I can go ahead and list those. So I can write mortgage, HOA, and again, I can highlight when these are finished or when they're paid. The 16th is C credit, the 17th, is PSENJ, the 18th is Verizon, and the 19th is Optimum. Then we have the 28th, which is Honda. And actually I'm seeing that and I realize I missed one because I missed my car insurance, which is the 15th. Then the 29th is A credit, and we have two here because this is also the third. We have V credit. And on the 30th, we have Netflix. Okay, income. You can separate this by different paychecks. You can also separate it by different sources of income. So I'm going to write uh, here, we're gonna write full-time and side job. And I'll put those amounts and then savings will add to as the month goes on. Now let's list out some monthly financial goals. So I've talked a bit in some previous videos about how my car lease ended in April and I needed to make a decision about whether I was going to buy my car or whether I was going to lease a new car. I have not yet made that decision, so I decided to extend my lease for a little while because April has been such a busy month that I just didn't have time to make such a big decision. So we're going to list out some monthly financial goals here. And one of these is going to be car decision. The next one is going to be save 500 towards retirement, review investments, map out summer budget, and evaluate earnings. Now in the checklist area, I'm going to add in some things that I wanna be mindful of financially this month. So one of them is going to be 
Mother's Day because I will be spending money on Mother's Day for flowers, a card, and a gift for my mom, and also for my friend's birthday. And then another thing is going to be parking fees. So I live in the suburbs, but my boyfriend lives in a city and there's parking fees when I go to uh, visit him. So that's something that hasn't been part of my budget in the past, but I definitely want it to be part of my budget in the future. So the other thing is going to be summer vacation because we are starting to talk about going away this summer and I definitely wanna be sure that I am looking at my budget for that. So this is kind of enough for a monthly overview to get started and feel like I am prepared for the month. And then we're going to look at my more my monthly budget. So we're going to write down some of these bills. I don't have insurance. I do have insurance. I don't have insurance. I do have insurance. That is part of my uh, mortgage. So that is in there. Maintenance is my homeowners association fee. That is for 50. Electric, water, sewer, gas, heating. I'm not going to know what those are going to cost yet. Waste removal is part of my city taxes. So I don't need to worry about that. And then phone and internet. So my phone bill is 146 and my internet is 87.50. Now, even though I don't know what these bills are because this is about budgeting, not the actual bill. So my electric, I'm going to budget 150 for this. Water and sewer comes quarterly, so I'm actually not going to have this. And gas and heating is part of the electric bill. So I'm gonna budget 150. I do have some money left over. I've been over budgeting each month for that bill because I haven't yet been in my house a year and I don't know what the bill is going to be each month. So if it is more than this, I do have money that's set aside for that. If it's uh, less than this, that's great. <laughs> Groceries. So I budget based on my payday. So I have four paydays in May and I budget $50 per payday for groceries. So that'll be a total of $200. And then dining out, we're going to budget also $200. So I have, sorry, I need to get a calculator. So my total here is going to be 4195.45. My total here will be 400. I don't have any medical or insurance bills because my company covers my health insurance, but I am going to put aside $100 into a medical sinking fund. This is used for co-pays and medicine. I was sick in March and I spent a decent amount of money on medicine at the pharmacy. So like over the counter medicine. So that will go towards there. And then we have my car payment which is 338. We have my car insurance, which is 122. And I'm going to budget 75 for fuel, 100 for maintenance, and we will not do bus train taxi. Side note, I can't find my calculator anywhere, so I'm doing this out on my computer. I'm sorry, I will order a new calculator. It seems to have completely disappeared. The total here is six. 57. Now we have clothing. So I'm not gonna budget for clothing this month. I have some money in the clothing sinking fund and for personal care, I'm going to do 100. And then sports and gym will be 44 because that's my Peloton membership. So our total here is 144. I don't have any loans. So this doesn't work or doesn't apply. And then entertainment and events and hobbies. So I'm going to budget 200 for entertainment and $50 for hobbies. And that total will be 250. Other things that I'm going to budget this budget for this month are retirement, emergency fund, and I call this my aunt fund, money that I spend when I'm with my niece and nephew. So retirement, we're going to do 500. Emergency fund, I'd like to contribute $150 per week. So that is 600. And my aunt fund will be 50. So the subtotal here is going to be 1150. And then we just need to total all of these sections. Now our total budgeted amount is going to be six, eight, nine, six, 
45. Now, of course, you'll want to be sure when you're setting a budget that that number is more than your income. So it's a high number. I do have two jobs and that's where that number comes in. But there's also a lot that I'm setting aside for taxes and things like that. If you have this number and it is less than your income, then it's really important to look at these categories and see where you can cut out a little bit because of course you don't wanna be budgeting more than you actually earn and that is where we end up going into debt. So this is going to be really helpful for me, especially as I'm looking at my budget and I'm seeing when my paydays are, when my bills are due and how I'll kind of work all of that out in addition to being able to add to my savings look at my monthly budget goals, my checklist, get my bills paid, and then even add to the saving trackers that are at the back of this planner. So hopefully this video gave you some ideas and some inspiration if you have yet to set up your May budget. I really love this planner. I love how it lays flat. Of course, it also has a pen loop and a band to keep it closed in addition to three ribbons. So you could put one with your financial goals at the beginning, one with the month that you're currently on, and then another with some savings trackers or debt payoff trackers in the back. So we hope that you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while you are at it. And we will link this planner in the description for you. Happy shopping, happy budgeting, happy May, and thanks for spending time with us today.